Doug with you, Scala here at AWG with Jordan, the robotic welding engineer. And Jordan is going to take you through the six different modes of programming. So when it comes to collaborative robot, it's all about ease of use, right? And so an ease of programming. So Jordan is going to talk about not only the ease of use, but also really the flexibility that we have in our, in our six different uh, programming feature or modes. So Jordan, with that. Yeah, so the first one we're going to go through, you have six different options here. Uh, you have your smart frame, joint, XYZ world, tool, user, and hand guiding. And so each one of these is a different way in which you can control the robot in the free space. Uh, we'll start on this first one here. This is smart frame. So smart frame is if you don't know how XYZ works or it's confusing for you and you just want to be able to say, I want the robot closer to me, farther away. This is actually calibrated through a gyroscope here. So if I stand in front of the robot, do everything that it says here on the screen, and I've calibrated myself, now I'm here at zero degrees. And so you can see I'm roughly at zero, but as I turn the pendant, it's clocking that direction, and it's saying, oh, I'm this far away from it. So we'll start here. Let's say I want the robot to move away from me, and I hold away. Well, now it's going to go away from me. But if I stand over here and I say, okay, I want you to go away from me now, now away is in this direction. And that's all relative into the direction that which you take the smart pendant. Up is always going to be up, though you don't have to worry about what direction Z or X positive and all those are. And another great feature is you have your rotate function here. And let's say I want to twist the arm around, but I don't know really which one I want to do. If I hold this, I could just tilt that. So there's close to 45 that I want. And I want a push angle, so I'm going to turn that, and now I have my push angle. And so it's all function through here. This is a great tool for anyone that's starting in robotics and they have no experience with it. This is a really easy way to get a better understanding of how the robot moves. After that, we'll go down here and we'll go into joint. So this is one of your more traditional uh, movement types. This is not exclusive to the smart pendant, but each one of these joints is represented. So a robot has usually six joints of movement and they're all labeled here. So you have your S, L, U, R, B, and T, and each one of those is represented here. So if I hold my S in the negative direction, I'm going to swing my robot in the negative or back in the positive. If I want my lower arm to move up and down, and I hold the negative, it moves it back, and positive moves it down. If I want my upper arm to move, same thing, negative and positive, take it, and it's not moving any other joint but the one I'm selecting. Same thing here with rotate, bend, and then you have your twist. Now once you get into XYZ world, this is another traditional movement type in which all of your motion is gone against your X, Y, and Z. Your X positive and your Y negative, or sorry, your X positive and X negative travel your direction forward and back. So negative is back, positive is forward. Your Y negative and positive is right and left. And then your Z positive and negative, Z positive is up, Z negative is down. And all of those rotations follow that same function. So you can rotate in your X, you can rotate your forward and back, or you can rotate your Z. After world, you also have XYZ tool, which is instead of it being the robot's X, Y, and Z position, it is the end of the wire as your position. So in this case, you have your tool. Your Z, instead of being up and down now, is actually going to be in relation to travel. So if I do negative Z, it's moving away or into my wire. So if I go down back positive, it's actually going to follow my wire back down in which it's moving. And then your X and Y are based off of that. So my X negative is going to be out and away diagonally from wherever this wire is pointed. Okay. And so that would be that would be helpful going into exactly. when you're when you're away from that joint and you mm -hmm. want to get into it. That's where you could use yeah. that. Yeah. So instead of if I wanted to yeah. just get into the part here and I moved in my positive or negative, it takes it right there. But if I was in world, I might have to zigzag my way. I might yeah. have to go a little this way and then a little this way and then down a little bit. So you'd have to work your way in. With this one, it just goes straight in. Great. Lastly, you know, you have your uh, XYZ user. This is if you wanted to set up a special frame. Uh, this is anything that's, you have an external access or something like that that you've programmed in. Um, in this case, we don't have any setup. There is just the robot here. 
but if you had another piece that you wanted to program to or you had a gripper that was on the end of your part and you wanted a point in the center of those, that's how you would set that up and you could control it the same way you would with this one, the tool, just on a different user point. Okay. And then lastly, we have our hand guiding. Ah, the hand guiding. Yes. <laughs> this is a Everyone's favorite. Moment. Love, love hand guiding. I love the options that it gives you. You're able to physically take control of the robot. So if I don't know anything about XYZ and I just want to grab the robot and take it where I want it to go, I can just hold this move button here and then I can just physically grab the robot and I can twist this arm back. I can grab it from a different point. Let's say I want to push this up. I just go here, hold it, and then I can push the whole arm up. And each one of these arms has its own force sensors. And so I can actually determine which mode it transfers and which ones I want to turn. But let's say I don't want to move any of this. I just want to move the rotation around here. And if I push on this, sometimes the whole thing goes, but I'm just trying to turn. So what I can do is I can go from all joints, which shows you you have each one of these in control. I can go to tool joints. And now all of these are grayed out, so it's not going to move your S, L, or your U. And I can only use these last three. So now when I try to move this and turn it, now it doesn't move the rest of the robot. I'm just turning this joint. Mm -hmm. And that's a great tool if you're trying to do circular welds, you're trying to go around pipe, and you don't want the rest of the robot to move, but you still want to use hand guiding. It's a great tool. Great. Great explanation. Oh. And uh, then you also have your X, Y, Z tool options for that, and you control everything down here. So the robot's going to move in relation to this. It doesn't oh, okay. move much different than your all joints, but the robot's going to try and keep this position in that same spot. So see, as I'm pulling it across, this isn't shifting anywhere. It's going X, Y, and Z. Uh, okay. Okay. Great explanation. Oh. All right. Thank you very much, Jordan. Really no appreciate problem. it.